Hey everyone, Rideshare Reseller here. I'm gonna show you a different little video today. I am going to show you a video of uh, two of an item that many people are afraid to pick up because about 90% 90 90 of the time when you see these, they don't work. And you know, so if it doesn't work, most people won't pick them up. I'm gonna show you how I picked up one for free and one for $13, okay? and how I'm gonna fix them uh, to sell one for about 200 to 250 and one for 150 to 200. All right, guys, uh, so I'm gonna flip this video around and I'm gonna show you what you should look for if you're mechanically inclined. I'll also show you kind of how I go about fixing it. All right, see you in a second. All right, everybody, here is what we're talking about. These are what you're gonna be looking for I have a pair of them, and this first one I got free, yes, free, off of Offered Up. He said it was broken and for parts. So anyhow, um, I knew exactly probably what was wrong with it, and I went and picked it up, and what's great is he had the remote. If you have the remote for these, that's like $50 more. So this is a 400 CD unit, this unit over here is a 300, so it holds 300, that one, the other one holds 400. Sony, great brand, so you know you're dealing with very good product overall. What goes wrong with these is the belts, as we know, and I'm gonna show you um, how to replace those. 90% of the time on these units, the belts are what are bad. And that's all, so for the risk of zero and 13, I got this one for $13 at Savers. You saw it in one of my videos. So I got that for like 13 bucks. So I've got $13 invested. The bands cost me about 10. I usually buy the better bands just for uh, the precaution. So this is what you're gonna look for when you're out, okay? Don't be afraid of these. Turn them on, make sure the power comes on. If it doesn't work, it's probably gonna be those bands. And I'm gonna show you in a video, in uh, the video here, how to replace them. Now, this is not for the hi-fi guy. This is for the reseller. I'm gonna give you a general of where the bands are and generally how to fix it. Not a great in-depth video. Um, if I can do this, anyone can. If you need more help, go to YouTube and search it out. There's a couple videos out there with a little bit more detail. This one is easier. The bigger one's actually easier. You can do it without taking the back off. This one here, I'm probably gonna have to take the back off, but it's not that complicated. And I'll remove the back and then get the bands on on that one. And I already know this one's bad because when I popped it off, the bands were gone. So um, that's already pretty sure it's just the bands. So let's get into the video on how to do this. And guys, like I said, keep your eye out for these beauties. Okay guys, so this is, I took the top off. I had the bolts off, the nuts, and I'm gonna show you. So this is what it kinda looks like inside. It holds 400 CDs. It's actually very light, very light. So it's not as bad to ship as you think. You just need a big box. And uh, deep inside here, um, uh, I'm gonna try, and, I'll try and use a knife. Let me get a knife out here. Not very well prepared. Back in here, You'll see I put a temporary band there, and then there's one back there, okay? So I wanted to test it prior to buying the belts just to make sure. And we have to replace those belts. That belt is what turns the disc. I mean, it obviously helps turn these, this disc platen and also loads the CD. And those belts go bad. That's generally... 90% of the time, what's wrong with these machines when you find them? It's just the belts. So I have to take and change those. And I've ordered a pair. I ordered a set right there is my set. I ordered that from Amazon. You can get it at eBay too. And I'm going to show you a general quick fix on that. And let's see if we can get this unit running. All right, give, you a, give me a second. Okay, on the CD400, the way I'm doing this is I am standing this unit up vertically like this to allow gravity to work on those two 
rubber bands down there and make my life easier. I don't want to have to take the back off. So this is not a video for um, the Hi-Fi guy. This is not going to be that in-depth. I'm just trying to show in general what I'm doing. So I'm going to try and get those two belts off. And uh, by first, I'm going to move my hand, hand in from this side way over here and from down in here. So from both ends, from both ends, it's open on that end, open on this end. I'm going to work my hands in there and I'm going to work those uh, two bands off. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to get the first one. The first one's pretty straightforward. You can see me. I'm going to, my big old hand, but I'm going to reach in there. And basically, you saw me just pop off. I used a hair rubber band to test it. So that's how easy that one is to get off. And it's going to be just about as easy to get back on. And now and I have to work my way to get that one. That one's just a little bit more tricky. It requires kind of two hands. So I'm going to have to turn it off. All right, All right guys. All right. Belts have been replaced. Let's put one disc in slot one. Let's hit play. Let's watch what happens. There goes the disc. And it's spinning. And it's doing its thing over here. Let's see what happens. Boom. There it goes. It's playing away. So basically, again, these are very simple. Mechanically speaking, it's usually the rubber bands back there, the bands. So again, there's one that I got for free. That little $10 fix will get me between two and 250. And I have bands on order for this one, which will get me 150 to 200. And again, don't be afraid of these guys. They're not, they're not as bad as you think. I love finding these because the reason they're there is those bands are off and people just don't know how to fix them. So, hey, thanks for watching.